Hey everyone, this is Dimitri Pergamonic with MarketChameleon.com. In this video, I'm going to go over a few different examples how to analyze the price of an option straddle. And we're going to do it strictly from a historical perspective using our historical data. And what I mean by that is we're just going to use historical data to help guide our decision making. And we're going to assume that we don't really have any other information that some kind of event's going to happen. The Fed's going to announce... Or, um, make an announcement so we don't really have any other type of information except for our historical data and to give you an analogy let's assume you were um, a coach for a football team and you had to make a decision on what play to run and let's say you're faced with a situation where your team is down by three points and you have to decide should I kick a field goal tie it and go uh, to overtime or maybe the right now the situation is fourth and one and if you get that one yard then you could continue uh continue making plays and getting closer to the end zone and then you might want to do what you might want to do is to help out with that decision you might look at your historical statistics and say well from this distance our kicker is 50 50 half the time he makes it from this distance half the time he doesn't make it and if the if we go for fourth and one our historical conversion is let's say 80 percent well now you're you have some statistics um to help guide your decision making on what play you should run and that's when i and that's the kind of thing i'm talking about when we look from a historical perspective we don't know the outcome but what do we think is likely going to happen and that's how that's how i'm going to show you diff, a couple different ways to analyze an option straddle now for those of you who may not be completely familiar with an option straddle it's over here i'm just going to bring up a payout diagram and i'm going to do it from the side of buying an option straddle so what you would do is here's at the money strike so this is the strike that's closest to the current option to, to the current stock price and what we'll do is we're going to buy a call and we're going to buy a put at the same time and this is what the straddle looks like the payout at uh, at expiration you could see this is the, the red is where you lose the green is where you make and this is a non-directional play in other words you're looking for a magnitude of the move so this will cost you six dollars 88 cents if you buy the call and the put by expiration it has if you if you bought them it has to move more than six dollars and 88 cents for you to cover the cost of that straddle until you start becoming profitable so you could see here this is how it looks to the downside once you cross your break even you cover the cost of the straddle then you make money as it goes lower and lower same thing to the upside so the question here is then um and here the the stock has to move approximately two percent for you to cover this this cost of the straddle so the question is in spy well with this many trading days to go roughly 13 trading days to expiration how often does SPY move enough you know in that period is in so starting from today you know today's price how much of a drift will it make over a 13 day period that it will cover that cost of that straddle so that's the first analysis we want to do is that even realistic does that ever happen or does that happen very often so I'm going to leave this page up here for now and I'm going to go to the easiest is I came here to the our screener so these this is a screener for option straddles and i'm just going to isolate for january 17th i'm going to isolate um spy so since we're only looking at spy i'm just going to put the spy up here and let's take a look at these statistics so over here this is the current market price if you if from the buy side this is the current market price if you sell it you know there's a little there's a spread so the prices are a little bit different and this is next to it is the theoretical value and what this is saying is that historically uh if you did a similar straddle in spy and you waited um you know 13 trading days based on the the average percentage move absolute move it doesn't matter in either direction you know you're taking the percentage move up the percentage move down you're converting them to all positive 
and that's the absolute and you take in the average so once you take the average move and then you convert it to a price based on the current stock price then you could compare the theoretical value worth versus what the market prices are today so you could see here market price 688 theoretical value is six so then this here looks on the surface right now as a little bit priced a little bit higher than the average absolute move. So you could see over here um, that the straddle is implying a 2.1% move from today's stock price. So that's that's what the implied move is based on the straddle. And over here, you could see that the at the money implied volatility is 11.9. Now, let's take a look at the from a volatility perspective and instead of looking at this was looking at six years of data let's just take a look at what the volatility. so i'm going to go to this volatility tab and say okay <clears throat> based on the today's implied volatility 11.9 the straddle has to move 2.1 percent you know that's the break even in the last 20 days if i just take a look at the last 20 days you could see here that spy has moved on average at a much lower volatility 7.8 so the implied move right now is 11 is 2.1 percent within with an implied volatility 11.9 if we looked at the actual volatility of the stock in the last 20 days it's been 7.8 which if it moves at that volatility 7.8 then the implied move is 1.4 percent so you could see here this is a little bit higher 2.1 percent versus 1.4 percent if we just assume that the volatility will remain similar to the last 20 days now let's compare it to the last year maybe it's going to uh, revert to its average volatility over one year period so you could see here uh it's one year historical volatility is 11.4 versus an implied 11.9 so we could look at the percentage moves this still requires a 2.1 percent move and this is much closer this implies a two percent move so if it reverts to one year volatility we could see that that's fair pretty much fairly priced um that's kind of where on average where where it moves now let's take it a little bit further and analyze it um not just on what it typically moves in a 13-day period but let's we know like today is december 31st so so it's the end of the year and one thing we might want to check is does the magnitude after the new year right when people come back they're on vacation and maybe leading up to new year's it kind of slows down and right after the new year perhaps there's reestablishment of positions you know there there are people who have been waiting they've sold stock for tax loss purposes whatever it is maybe right after the new year does the stock tend to move more um in that first period than than it typically moves so let's go and analyze that part of it and i'm going to go here and i just went to our uh, price action analysis here and over here i put spy and as you could see first i set it up for six years what does it typically move in a 12 day 12 trading day period i ran this analysis and I'm just going to come down here. I'm going to skip all this analysis. I'm going to go just to the absolute average move. So as you could see here in 12 days, on average, the absolute average move is 1.84%. So it's kind of close. It's right there to where the straddle is priced currently. But let's look at a different scenario. And let's look at a seasonality. And I'm going to switch this to seasonality. And I'm going to say starting december 31st historically from this start date till this expiration january 17th i'm just gonna let me just make sure that's the right uh that's january 17th right so this is the this option this straddle expires january 17th so let's come back here historically between december 31st which is today's date and january 17th in the last 12 years what did SPY tend to move? So I'm going to rerun that analysis here. So let's just come down here and use, and you could see here the magnitude of moves. So you could see here last year it was 5.2% positive, 
1.5% positive the year prior to that. Here, didn't move enough. That only moved 1.2%. You could see here on 2016, it moved down as much as 7.9%. So let's take the average, absolute average of all these moves. So we're, we're taking these moves, we're converting the negative moves to positive, positive to, to uh, average them all out just to get the magnitude of the move. So here we could see the absolute average move, the seasonality has been 3.99%, almost 4%. So if we use that analysis, if we use that analysis and think, you know, that, that what is going to happen this year will be more typical of a seasonal move from prior years, then we could see here that this, this straddle is potentially undervalued. Right, because as you can see here, given given this period between December thirty first, January seventeenth, the magnitude of the moves have been greater than typical than than typically that you see in a twelve or thirteen day um, hold period. Um, but if we just go back and look at the prior twenty days, and we say, well, you know, I don't think that's going to happen this year. You know, I think I'm more i think it's more likely going to move um based on what it's recently been moving in the last 20 days then that statistic right we have two conflicting statistics that one looks like then that the current straddle is a little bit high high highly priced you know because it's estimating a 2.1 percent move versus and let if it continues on the same volatility as the last 20 days It'll be a 1.4 percent move uh, on average. So, so that's a couple different ways to look at an option straddle using historical data to help guide your decision making. Hopefully, this was helpful. Um, ask any questions, guys, or leave some comments. Um, and have a good New Year. See you guys next time. Bye.